everyone, and welcome back to Tokyo Tuesdays, the segment in which I head to the Tokyo Disney theme parks to sample and review every last eatery. For our 44th episode, we're finally hitting up one of my favorite eateries, the Blue Bayou Restaurant. This one has been a long time coming, and I've been saving it for a special occasion. To get to Tokyo Disneyland's Blue Bayou Restaurant, head straight into the World Bazaar. Continue straight until you come to the first intersection. Turn left and head down this street, passing the East Side Cafe on your left and the Great American Waffle Company on your right. Turn right as you pass the Great American Waffle Company and then left at Pirates of the Caribbean. As you continue forward, you'll come across the Royal Street Veranda and its neighbor, Cafe Orleans. Turn left again to pass between the two heading down the side street into the back of the New Orleans area. There at the back and on your left, you'll find the entrance to the Blue Bayou Restaurant. The Blue Bayou is an indoor-outdoor style restaurant, meaning you start in a very classy, fancy parlor, and then, when your table is ready, you're led back outside to a room designed to look like a nighttime backyard dinner party. Lanterns are strung over the tables, between the trees and street lamp posts, and garden trellises. On one side you have the bayou, with full houseboats, stars, fireflies, and Pirates of the Caribbean boats heading off on their adventures. On the other, you have a large two-story house facade, completing the illusion that you're outdoors. So today, I am in the dark. Uh which some of you might recognize as the Blue Bayou. Uh, I am here with my very good friend Lee from New Zealand. Hello. <laughs> we, may, we may get to see her or we may not, depending on how things shake out. Uh, but yeah, we're at the Blue Bayou for dinner this evening. Uh, we had to work very hard to get in. Uh, what We waited uh, at least two hours. At least two hours in line. We tried very hard to make reservations online. We tried by phone, that didn't work. Uh, then we tried day of reservations. The website <laughs> did not work. We couldn't. Even, the Disney employees couldn't even get it to work. Uh, but we did finally manage to get dinner reservations, which is great. Uh, so we've ordered already. Yes. Okay. Well, uh, you got the lobster tail. Uh, lobster tail gumbo. Lobster tail gumbo. Uh, dessert is a chocolate bread pudding. Chocolate bread pudding. And the specialty drink. And the specialty drink. I also got the specialty drink. I got uh, chicken sautéed in bourbon and bourbon something. Cream, uh, um, sounds amazing. Uh, I got the bread because I'm hungry. Uh, the specialty drink, and I got the uh, crisp apple ice cream dessert. So we'll see how that turns out. It sounds interesting. Uh, it's very dark in here, and so I don't think most of the footage is going to turn out. I have this light pulled all the way up to my face to make any of this show up. Um, so I'll be turning the camera on and off as food is delivered in order to preserve filmy film. Uh, and so I'll probably be back once food is delivered. All right. Uh, so my bread has been delivered. It was delivered with instructions. <coughs> I have a cold. <coughs> it was delivered with instructions, which I did not entirely understand. Um, it started, so here, here is bread. Uh, it is lovely and dark. Um, it sounded like she was just telling me the different types of bread, but then she told me to wait a moment, and I don't know why. <laughs> uh, so it also came with butter. I got three little butter pats, which I will not at all use up. Um, and yeah, I, I'm, I'm very confused about why I was asked to wait. I, I, I want to eat my bread. I don't know. So I have determined slash decided that she was saying <laughs> that I needed to wait for the rest, like that for the rest of the meal, I would have to, I would have to wait for that to be brought out. The bread was out now nope. and the rest of the food would come later. Uh, so I'm going to eat my bread because I want to eat my bread. <laughs> food has arrived. I'm going to apologize in advance. Usually I have some fairly nice glamour shots of the food. Uh, that is not going to be the case today, just looking at the footage I've been able to pull in the dark. Uh, this has an amazing looking sauce, 
amazing little bit of chicken and potatoes. So our drinks just arrived. I'll try and get some footage of that. But as I was saying, uh, the footage is not going to do this food justice, I can already tell you that much, because it's just too dark to get a decent shot of it. But we'll see how it goes. It's such a shame because it's very lovely looking. It is. They both look really great. Mm. All right. Uh, I'm going to finish my bread because I was in the process of eating bread. Hard bread is good. Ooh, that's tasty. <laughs> what are you starting with? I just tried with the rice. I've got lobster tail, uh, prawn or shrimp, depending mm -hmm. on the country you're in, the larger mm -hmm. version. <laughs> Uh, scallop without the roe. Uh, looks like type of some sort of fish and uh, cherry tomato, um, okra, which is nice as well. Very southern. Yep. And possibly little oysters. I'm not sure yet. Little oysters or mushrooms. It looks like it from might here. Be mushrooms. We should find out. Definitely oysters. Mmm. Mmm. It's still very nice. So a very seafood mm. dish. Absolutely. And some sort of dusting of spice around the edge, it looks, looks like. Looks almost like mustard from here. So this was not a specialty dish, nope. was it? This was from the standard menu. Yeah, it was. Excellent. Mm. And yes, if you're a seafood lover, I so far recommend it. We'll see how far <laughs> I get through it. <laughs> you I haven't even it. tried the lobster tail yet. I don't care. It's still packed to flavor, which is very nice. I'll start with the, the potatoes. Oh, so good. Little tiny scallop potatoes, so good. They are both soft and crisp and everything you could want from scallop potatoes. Let's try the sauce. Mm, your bourbon scented one. Can you taste any of the bourbon? It's a good sauce. Green beans, potatoes, mm. chicken. Smells like cabbage. Yeah, I believe this is a cabbage. No. No? <laughs> Reddish? Not sure what it is. Mm. Very papery, whatever it is. All right, chicken time. Okay. There's the bourbon flavor. Got it for me? <laughs> so this specialty drink for the Blue Bayou is uh, blue at the bottom, appropriately enough. Yep. Wheat cheese fun. So today was your first day at Tokyo Disney, Tokyo Disneyland. It's my first day at any Disneyland. It's so. your first day at any Disneyland. Yes. I was very excited. Uh, how, how does it hold up, would you say? Um, very much so. It's, I've been to other amusement parks, mainly Universal Studios, twice now. But I would very much rank Disney over Universal Studios. It just feels more in depth to me. And Oh, that's good. It is? Yeah, that's quite enjoyable. Not if you don't like pineapple, but I do like pineapple. <laughs> so. so what's been your favorite thing at uh, Tokyo Disneyland? Um, I certainly enjoyed the rides. Uh, we've been on some absolutely amazing ones. Uh, the Star Wars one in particular we've really enjoyed. Star Tours is ranking number one, it sounds it's like. It's amazing. I think that overall is just the general atmosphere of the park. And very quickly, the All Ings area is my favorite just for the, just for the soundtrack alone. Yeah. It reminds me of New Orleans when I was there. And um, whoop. <laughs> Sounds like someone just fell into the bayou. <laughs> Save them from the gators. <laughs> Definitely meet expectations and went above. So oh. there we go. I'm, I'm pleased to hear that. I'm very glad that we organize this trip. So if you would have any advice about visiting Tokyo Disneyland, what would it be? Um, uh, let's see, if you're not used to crowds, you're going to need some practice. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Um, also, check out the weather before you come. It was, uh, it's turned out not too bad, but it was a little wet, wet earlier. It's been pretty rainy all day. Mm. It's not a bad rainy day. Mm. Like, I've been in the park on days when it's just downpouring. Mm. Today it's just like someone's following you around with a spray <laughs> bottle just <laughs> at you all day. Which doesn't sound so bad, but it adds up pretty quick. Comfortable walking shoes, of course. Mm -hmm. And I think the biggest one, which we, I feel we did well, was planning your day. Yes. So we um, got our seats here, mm -hmm. which turned out luckily very well. Yep, yep. Uh, but we also had fast passes to certain rides as well. We fast passed uh, Haunted Mansion was our mm -hmm. first fast yep. pass. Very then normal. two hours later, we got our fast pass for um, Star Tours. Yep. 
and those were our two fast passes of the day. Yep. After that, they were, you know, they were pretty much shut down for fast passes mm. after that. And the wait times weren't too bad, actually. No. Uh, especially compared to Universal Studios when we went, which I think we almost had a two-hour wait for one of ours. Yeah, we did three attractions at Universal Studios. And we've done at least five, yeah, more. We, okay, so we did Haunted, Haunted Mansion. Yep. We did Star Tours. Uh, we did Pirates? Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, very good we stuff. did uh, Peter Pan. Yep. Mickey. We did uh, Mickey's Philhar Magic. Yep. We did Alice's Tea Party. Uh, we also, oh yes, we did Alice's Tea Party. <laughs> uh, we went to see Cinderella's. We went. We walked through Cinderella's Palace. Uh, and I think that's about it. Isn't it? So and we did Star Tours again. Yes. <laughs> and hopefully another Star Tours afterwards. <coughs> so yeah, so far today oh, we've done the shooting one as well. Oh, yeah, we did Astro Blasters, actually, yes. which was really cool. So, so we've almost done two hands worth of stuff. Um, and to, the park is at 90% uh, attendance today. Mm. So it's a very high attendance day. And because we planned ahead, mm. we've been able to hit nine attractions. Also incredibly, incredibly amazing staff around here. Yeah, all we've had friendly, really great staff. All friendly, all greeting, all smiles, willing to help making jokes, mm -hmm. it's such a change it's from nice. other places. It's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, I'm gonna turn my camera off again and we're gonna wait for dessert to show up, Yay. hopefully Yay. soon. I am certainly ready for such a thing. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. Dessert has arrived. I have a apple crisp with vanilla ice cream and you have something with banana and chocolate. Uh, it's supposed to be a chocolate bread and butter pudding and they have um, also had bananas on it and a little swirl of uh, a red fruit. I'm going to guess strawberry. Hmm. I once again have a spoon that is far too big so I'll be eating with a fork because <laughs> reasons. Like That's mint. a mint leaf, and I'm hoping cinnamon, chocolate. Ooh. Mmm. Mmm. That's an apple pie. Oh yeah. Personally, and this should come as no surprise as anyone who knows me, I prefer the ingredients separate. I don't really <laughs> care for these ones when they're mi not that I don't care for them when they're mixed together, but I prefer to appreciate them when they're on their own. Oh wow, that's very rich, <laughs> very intense chocolate. I'm glad I didn't get that now because I don't like bananas. Yeah, I was gonna say, it was not on the menu, or at least not that I spotted. Mm. So yeah, this is just a baked apple mm. with uh, vanilla ice cream on top. So they cored an apple, they baked it, yep. they put vanilla on top, and then put a dollop of uh, uh, sour custard on the side. Oh, okay. Mm. So tasty. Mm. So delicious. <laughs> this is a mint leaf and it looks perfect. <laughs> that is a perfectly symmetrical, beautiful leaf. Well done. I'm gonna eat it. Don't give me nice things. <laughs> I ruin nice things. So that is it for us here at the Blue Bayou. We are going on to watch uh, parades and shows and the like and maybe do star tours yet again. Uh, but I will see you at the next place where that may be. Say goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Back from the bayou, so let's begin the look back. Service. Service is a 4 out of 5. If I was basing this rating just off of the assistance we had trying to make reservations, it would be a 5 out of 5, no doubt. Uh, making reservations at Tokyo Disneyland is something of a nightmare process, to the point where even if you have an employee next to you trying to help you make reservations, they can't make the system work. It's very broken, the employees agree that it's broken, that, however, is not the issue we're talking about. Once we were actually in the restaurant, the service was more of a 4 out of 5. It was still good and above average, they just didn't assist us on top of assisting us, if that makes any sense. Uh, they did a very lovely menu presentation when we got in. 
But we had a number of issues spring up because my Japanese isn't that good and none of them spoke any English. It's to be expected, and I certainly don't fault them for that, it just made for a more 4 out of 5 than 5 out of 5 experience. Still, that's not bad. Atmosphere. Atmosphere is a 5 out of 5. Let's get the obvious one out of the way first. This is a dark, dark, dark eatery. It's not so dark that your eyes won't adjust, but it is worth noting. However, once your eyes do adjust, the atmosphere here is delightful. There's so much about this place that I like. You have the gentle singing of crickets, the Spanish moss, the sound of banjo music coming in across the water, the glow of the lanterns, the shrieks of guests as they go over the edge. It's so nice. It's an indoor-outdoor party on the water. I've never experienced anything like it inside or outside the park outside of Blue Bayou. It's not expressly Disney, I don't think, but its unique atmosphere is more than worth it. Five out of five. Price point. Price is a two out of five. I'm really sorry to have to give this location such a low rating, but the fact of the matter is this is not a cheap location to eat at. You even have to pay for the bread if you want it, 260 yen. After that, the price sadly does not reflect the quality of the food that you're getting. You either give me bigger portions, better food, or lower the price if you want to balance this location out. Two out of five. Sorry. The food itself. The food is a three out of five. I had the chicken with cream sauce and bourbon and I did not like it. The cream sauce was fine and the vegetables that came with it were amazing, but the chicken itself was disgusting. Uh, I was almost entirely fat and cartilage and was so instinctually not okay that I actually ended up spitting part of it out on my plate. I don't know if I just got a bad cut or if I read the menu wrong, but I was shocked at how much I did not like this food. Uh, meanwhile, my friend got the lobster tail, and she really enjoyed it, although she did say the lobster tail was a bit on the small side. Additionally, she said the fish tasted freezer-ish, which... I don't eat fish, so I'm not entirely sure what that means, but I'm sure it'll make sense to somebody. Uh, basically, we expected better. Um, the bread was fine, though maybe not 260 yen fine. The drinks were excellent. The desserts were amazing. Although hers did come with banana in it, and banana was not mentioned on the menu, which is always a little bit unfortunate. Um, I've had really, really good experiences with the Blue Bayou in the past, and so I'm not sure why the food was so middling this time. If it was up to me, I would have given it a 2 out of 5, however, she really enjoyed her food and would have given it a 4 out of 5, therefore I'm officially giving it a 3 out of 5. Overall rating. Overall, this gives the Blue Bayou restaurant an average rating of 3.5 out of 5, which is surprisingly low. I've always had such good experiences at this location. I always thought that it would rank higher when I finally got around to it, but nope. Who knew? The lineup. With a 3.5 out of 5, this ties the Blue Bayou Restaurant with Boiler Room Bites and the Royal Street Veranda on the master list. I'm going to go ahead and slot it in just below both of these, earning it 6th place. With how hard it was to get reservations, combined with the quality and the cost of the food, I would just as soon go to either of the other locations. Meanwhile, over on the table service list, it comes in at 2nd place. I would say I was surprised, but I really do feel like my experience this time was a fluke. I've enjoyed them at least that much every other time I've visited. So, that's it for this week. Next week, I'll be on vacation, so be sure to come back the week after that to find out where I'll be next. If you have any comments or suggestions, please feel free to leave those down below. We'd love to hear from you. 
Give this video a big ol' thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you like what we do, we'd surely appreciate it. If social media is more your flavor, you can find us there, links to that in the description box. And I will see you next week for another Tokyo Tuesday. The low light does nothing for this. No.